Hello everyone, thank you for all for being here today with us. And of also special thanks to our organizers to make this event happen. I am Elgaz Chaka, a mentor of Barış Yılmaz. Barış is a senior student in Gebze Technical University, and he will talk about a brief introduction to homology. We are with you, Barış. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for being here. Uh, today, I'm going to present a brief introduction to homology. So let's get started with my content. Uh, firstly, we will define cells and cell complexes. Then by using combinations and convex combinations and convex hulls, we are going to construct simplices and simplicial complex. After that, uh, we, will describe, we will describe chains and chain groups by taking linear combination of the simplices. And then we examine the boundaries and cycles. Finally, we introduce the homology groups by using these tools. Let's start with cells. Uh, N cell is a set whose interior is homeomorph homeomorphic to n dimensional unit disk. But there's an additional property that is frontier must be divided into, divided into a lower dimensional cells. Uh, let's look, up, look at the cells up to three, di to three dimensions. Uh, a zero dimensional, this is just a point and the one dimensional cell is a line segment. For two and three dimensional cell, here instead of polygon and sol solid poly polyhedron, uh, we often use um, tri triangle and tetrahedron because triangulation is useful in determining the properties of a topological space. For example, we can compute the homology groups of a triangulated space by using simplicial homology theories instead of more complicated homology theories. Uh, cells will be joined together to form uh, complexes, but we have a two condition. Uh, if sigma is a cell in K, then all faces of sigma are elements of K. What do we mean by here by faces? Uh, consider another cells in the complex, which is lower dimensional of sigma. Uh, if the vertices of that cell is also vertices of sigma, then it is a face of sigma. And if sigma and tau are cells in the complex, then the intersection of their interior must be equal to empty, empty cell. Uh, from the second condition, we note that uh, any two cells are either disjoint or they have to meet in a common face. Um, if you look at the cells intersection of these examples, none of them is appropriate to this node. So these are not uh, complex. Let's define convex combinations and convex hull. Mm, a point X is an F in this form is an affine combination of the UI, uh, where the uh, with the uh, real coefficient lambda i, where the UI is just a point the, in the d-dimensional space, and the summation of the lambda i must be equal to one. Uh, if lambda lambda i are non-negative, then the affine combination X is called convex combination, and the set of convex combination is called convex hull. Uh, triangles, basic object that we can use to construct spaces. Uh, simplices can be considered as a um, generalization of triangles. And basically, a simplex is higher dimension of triangle. Um, now, consider we are in the two dimensional space and we have a, a two independent vector v1 and v2. And we also have a line passing through these two points. And this line has, has a parametric form, which is here. And we can describe the line segment here if the lambda is between 0 and 1. You can see that if lambda is close to 1, we are getting close to v2. If lambda is close to 0, we are getting close to v1. And every point on this uh, line segment is a convex combination. And set of all of them is just a convex hull, which is a one simplex. And now consider another vector v3. And if we take the affine combination with, with these points and uh, every point on this line segment, we, we get a, this time solid, uh, solid triangle, which we call this two simplex. And we can generalize this for higher dimension when, and we get the higher dimensional simplex. And we also have zero simplex is just a point. This time we use uh, simplexes to construct simplicial complexes. 
uh, synthesis will be together to form simplicial complex, but we have conditions as in the cell complexes. Uh, what are they? Uh, all faces of, sim of a simplex are, must be in the simplicial complex that we have, and intersection of simplices either disjoint or they have to meet in a common face. And note that n simplex is the convex hull of n plus one f finally independent points. We already construct uh, uh, two, these three simplex. And also note that three simplex is just a tetrahedron and note that uh, inside of this empty. Uh, let's define chains and chain groups. Let J be a directed complex, but uh, what is directed complex? If each cell in this complex has an orientation, then we say that complex K is a direct complex. But uh, what is the orientation? And an orientation of a cell is a specific choice of the order of its vertices. Uh, now we can define chains as a linear combination of finitely many oriented cells. And CK is a group with respect to chain addition. And for finite complexes, um, the group, the group CK will be a finitely generated and will be a group of the form uh, direct sum of the integer groups. Uh, let's look at the example about chain groups. Um, consider we have a complex K on the sphere. This is a pl planar diagram of, of, of the sphere. That means if we uh, glue the glue, band and glue the uh, one cells together, uh, then we get a then we can get a sphere. We have two cells sigma and one cell A, and two zero cells P and Q. For the two chain groups, we need to check uh, two cells, which we have only one sigma. And every integer multiples of sigma will be in this group. So the two chain groups is generating by generated by sigma. So it is isomorphic to integers. Similarly, uh, for the one chain, we check the one cells, which we have only A, and A is the generator of this group, so it is isomorphic to integers. But this time, for the zero chain groups, we have two zero cells, P and Q, and these are the generators of these groups, so it will be isomorphic uh, to direct, direct sum of two integer groups. Uh, boundary of a cell is a chain, consists of all all the one lower dimensional cells uh, that are faces of that cell. Now let's look at the boundary of cells up to two cells. Mm, boundary of a point is a null set because it does not consist of any chain. And boundary of line segment is terminal point minus initial point. And boundary of oriented two cells is formed by one cells, which are the faces of two cells. Uh, for, for this, consider triangle. Uh, boundary of a triangle consists of one cells, which are the edges. Let's see an example. Uh, we have one, one simplex and two simplex here. Uh, boundary of one cells, uh, boundary of A is terminal point minus initial points, which is Q minus P. And boundary of sigma uh, will be equal to A plus B minus C because sigma has an orientation on the clockwise. And we have a minus here because the C uh, is opposite direction of the sigma. Let's define the cycles and cycle groups, uh, cycles and boundary groups. Uh, let's see the k-chain in the direct complex. If the boundary of C is empty, then we call that C is a k-cycle and denoted by zk, and the k-cycle group is a subgroup, subgroup of k-chain, k-chain group. Um, a chain uh, which is not a cycle cannot, um, cannot enclose a cavity or loops. Uh, thus, cycles are important in determining the shape of the object. Uh, Boundary group, uh, let C be a K chain and let D be a K plus one chain. If the boundary of D is equal to C, then C is called a K boundary. And we denote the boundary group uh, with the BK, which is also the subgroup of the CK. Consider we have a complex on the torus. Uh, we, on this page, we are going to calculate the cycle groups. Uh, for the two cycle groups, we need to check a uh, boundary of two cells. Uh, note that the boundary of sigma and boundary of tau is not empty. So these are not the generators of the two cycle group, but uh, boundary of 
sigma minus tau is will be equal to empty. And since the uh, sigma minus tau is a two chain, this is the generator of uh, two, two cycle groups. So it is isomorphic to integer. Uh, for the one cycle group, we check the boundary of the one chains, which are all of them is equal to empty. So these are the, our generators. And the one, one cycle group is isomorphic to three direct sum of the integers. And finally, for the uh, zero cycle group, we only, we only have to check uh, the boundary of the one chains, which is the P. The boundary of P is a null set. So the, the, this is the generator of the zero cycle group. So it is isomorphic also the integer groups. Uh, we, again, we have the same complex. And this time we will uh, calculate the um, boundary groups. For the two boundary groups, we have to check the three cells but we don't have the three cells on this complex. Uh, so the two boundary group is trivial. For the one boundary group, we, we are going to calculate the boundary of two cells, which we already calculated this, uh, A minus B minus C. So this is the generator of one, uh, one boundary group. So one boundary group is isomorphic to integer group. And finally, uh, for the zero boundary group, we check the boundary of uh, one chains, uh, boundary of one chains is empty. And so the zero boundary group is uh, trivial. Uh, homology is a tool of the tool of topology, uh, which counts the holes of the shapes. Uh, up to now, um, we learned chains, cycles, and boundary groups. Now we will use these tools to define the homology and also use them to calculate homology groups. Uh, in homology, we are looking for cycles that cannot bound anything. Thus, uh, we can define the homology group as a quotient of, quotient of the uh, cycles and boundaries. The k homology groups can, is just uh, equal uh, the k cycle groups modular k boundary groups. Here are the steps of the uh, how we can compute the homology groups. These are the steps. These are all steps. We first find the, uh, the k chain groups. And after that, we will compute the boundary of the chain, boundary of that chain. And by using this, we will find a K cycle group and K boundary group. And finally, we can compute the K homology groups by taking the quotient of these two groups. Let's see an example. Uh, consider we have a complex K on the climb, climb bottle. Uh, let's get started with the second homology group. Uh, for the second homology group, we first look at the two chain groups. We have only to cell sigma. So the two chain group is generating generated by this. It is isomorphic integers. Uh, for the two cycle group, uh, we check the boundary of sigma, uh, which is 2D. Uh, this is not empty. So the two cycle group is trivial. And two boundary group is, uh, for the two boundary group, um, we check the three cells. But on this complex, we don't have three cells. So the two boundary group is also trivial. So we can. Uh, compute the second homology groups by taking quotient of these two groups. So it is isomorphic to zero uh, trivial group. Uh, for the first homology group, um, we start with the one chain group, which we have uh, two one cells, C and T, C and D. Uh, these are the generators of these groups. So it is isomorphic to this. Uh, we, we, then we compute the um, one cycle groups for the to do that, uh, we need to check the boundary of C and D, which is the equal empty set. So these are the generators of one cycle groups. So the one cycle group is isomorphic to this. And finally, the one boundary group, the one, one boundary group, we check the, the boundary of the two cells, two chains. And uh, the boundary of sigma, which we already calculated, is 2D. The one boundary group is generated by, generated by this. And uh, we can compute the first number of the group by taking quotient of these, these two groups. So it is isomorphic to this. And finally, we'll compute the zero homology groups. And again, we start with the zero chain groups, which we have only one uh, zero cells, Q. This is the generator of these groups. So it is isomorphic to integers. And for the zero cycle groups, we check the boundary of this. Boundary of the point is just an outset. So it is the 
generator of these groups. So the zero cycle group is isomorphic to integers. And for the zero boundary group, we check the boundary of one chains, which are the uh, equal equals empty set. So the, the zero boundary group is just a null set and it's trivial. Thus, uh, we can say that the zero homology group is just equal to zero cycle group, which is the gener generated of uh, Q, generated by Q. So it is isomorphic to integers. And finally, let's define the beta numbers. Uh, the k beta number is the number of k-dimensional holes of the shapes. Uh, beta numbers are topologic invariant and uh, denoted by beta k, and it is the rank of the, the k topology group. And it is compute. It can be computed uh, by this zk minus bk, where, where the zk is the rank of the cycle groups and bk is the rank of the boundary groups. Uh, let's look at an example uh, beta numbers geometrically. Uh, let's start with the circle. Uh, cir circle has a one connected component. So the beta, beta zero is one. Um, uh, circle has one dimensional hole, which is loop. So the be be beta one is one. Uh, circle has no two dimensional hole. Circle has no cavity. So beta two is just equal to zero. Let's uh, start the disk. Uh, disk has again one connected component, but this time disk has no one dimensional hole. Uh, so beta one is zero. This again, this has no cavity. So beta two is also zero. But this time for the sphere, we have again uh, one connected component. Beta zero is one. Uh, sphere has a cavity. So beta two is equal to one. But again, sphere has no one dimensional hole. So beta one is zero. Uh, finally, uh, torus has a one connected component, so beta zero is one. Uh, torus has a cavity also, so beta two is equal to one. But this time we have two one dimensional holes on the torus, uh, which are the, represented by blue and red circle here. So beta one is two. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>